Hello, everyone. My name is Hong Jinzhang. I'm very pleased to present you the work I have done with Professor Ian Davison on fair deep anomaly detection. In data analysis, anomaly detection is the identification of real items, events, or observations which raise suspicions by differing significantly from the majority of the data. Typically, the anomalous items will translate to some kind of problems, such as the fraud detection. Network intrusion and medical image analysis. Performance of traditional algorithms in detecting anomalies is suboptimal on the image and the sequence datasets, since it fails to capture complex structures in the data. Meanwhile, deep learning methods offer the opportunity to model complex nonlinear relationships within data, and leverage this for the anomaly detection task. Moreover, as the volume of data increases nowadays. It becomes more and more difficult for the traditional methods to scale to such large data to find anomalies. Instead, the deep learning methods will benefit more from a rich set of data. In recent years, a large number of unsupervised deep anomaly detection methods have been introduced. Here, we briefly overview the recent works among three different directions, which are reconstruction-based models, generative models. And deep one class classification models. The reconstruction-based methods assume the anomalies possess different features than the normal instance. Hence, given a pre-trained autoencoder over the normal instance, it will be hard to compress and reconstruct the anomalies. The anomaly score in this research is defined as the reconstruction loss for each test instance. The generative models are trained to generate normal groups instance. And used to score an unseen sample based on the ability of the model to generate a similar instance. The last type of work is deep one class classification. Take SVM for example. Standard SVM separates two classes using a hyperplane with the largest possible margin. Deep one class SVM is similar, but instead of using a hyperplane to separate two classes of instance, it uses a hypersphere to encompass all of the instance. The anomaly score is calculated based on the test instance distance to the centroid of the normal instance. Among the recent deep anomaly detection methods, we focus on deep SVDD as a base learner because it performs well on both low-dimensional and high-dimensional data. Given the training data, the deep SVDD network is trained to map all the points close to a fixed center C. It also contains a weight decay objective, which prevents learning a too complex mapping function. During the evaluation stage, the anomaly score of X is calculated by Euclidean distance between X feature space embedding and the center C. We also visualize the most normal and abnormal instance discovered by deep SVDD on the right plots. The results demonstrate deep SVDD's good anomaly detection performance. Although deep anomaly detection achieves pretty good performance, it still has some open problems to be solved, like the interpretability and the fairness problems. Here is one example of using the deep SVDD to do anomaly detection in this Salib A dataset. This is a facial image dataset with 200,000 celebrity images. We treat gender as the PSV, and the normal group contains most faces labeled as attractive. Our task is to train deep SVDD on normal data and make predictions for unseen data. We visualize the top 32 normal instance and the top 32 abnormal instance discovered by deep SVDD. We see that the normal group is dominated by females, while the abnormal group is dominated by males. Moreover, we have conducted another experiment on this complex recidivism data. Which consists of data from criminal defendants. We create a binary PSV for where the defendant is African American. Given the collected label of whether the defendant was rearrested after two years, we train deep SVDD on normal group and make predictions to find out abnormal group, which are reoffending. We report the composition of predicted anomaly instance in the red bar plot. We can see from the plot that African American people. Are more likely to be predicted as a normally group. Now we provide the outlines of our work. Firstly, we propose two measures of 
proof level fairness for deep anomaly detection problems. Secondly, we consider fair anomaly detection in the context of deep representation learning and propose a new fair anomaly detection framework using adversarial learning to remove the unfairness. Lastly, we conduct extensive experiments to demonstrate the success of our approach and show how our proposed model generates fair predictions. Our first notion of fairness is inspired by the 80% rule advocated by the U.S. Eco Employment Opportunity Commission. The 80% rule states that the ratio between the percentage of subjects having a certain sensitive attributed value assigned a positive decision outcome and the percentage of subjects not having the value also assigned positive outcome should be no less than 80%. Let T be the anomaly score threshold, then the abnormal group are points with scores greater than T. Given the protected status variable as Z, our definition of fairness measure leverages the 80% rule and replaces the 80% to P%. We show a toy example in the right plot and set the anomaly score threshold T equals to 10. Different colors represent different PSV groups. The fairness by P rule result is 1 for this particular problem. However, here are some limitations for our fairness by P rule definition. Firstly, we need to know the ground truth to correctly set the anomaly score threshold T. Secondly, this measure only considers the fairness in the abnormal group. Here, we propose another fairness measure for anomaly detection problems, which is invariant of the anomaly score threshold T and covers for both normal and abnormal groups. Let P denotes the distribution of the anomaly scores for test instance with sensitive attribute Z equals to zero, and Q for instance with sensitive attribute Z equals to one. We calculate the earth mover distance between distribution P and Q as fairness measure. We have designed one synthetic anomaly detection problem to show the motivation of our second fairness measure. Assume there are two anomaly detection models named A and B. The test data includes 27 males and 27 females, and the binary sensitive attribute is gender. To be specific, the predicted anomaly scores from model A and B are shown in figure A and B. Given the ground truth number of anomalies as 8, we can set the anomaly score threshold T equals to 8. Based on fairness by P rule, we find model A and B achieve the same fairness results. However, the fairness by distribution distance for model A and B are 1.37 and 2.87, which is quite different. This suggests that model B tends to be much more unfair. We will use both fairness measures for comprehensive evaluation in our experiments. Now we introduce our proposed framework. Given the normal training data X, encoder network F, and the parameters theta, we have the latent encoding of all the normal points. Denoted the binary PSV as Z, the fair representation is achieved when the learned embeddings are statistically independent of the sensitive attribute Z. The main idea of our deep fair SVDD model is to learn a compact representation for normal instance while making the embeddings statistically independent of the PSV variable. To achieve the fairness goal, we propose to use adversarial learning while a min-max game strategy to constrain the embedding function f. First, we concatenate the encoding network f with the discriminator g to learn to classify the sensitive attribute z based on learned embeddings. Since z is a binary variable, we use sigmoid function to get a probabilistic prediction as z hat. We choose cross-entropy laws to train discriminator g. To make the learned embeddings invariant with sensitive attributes Z, we hope to tune the embedding function F to fool the discriminator G. Meanwhile, we hope the normal points are still closely clustered together so that we design the adversarial loss as deep as we did this loss subtracting the discriminator's loss. Minimizing the adversarial loss is actually maximizing the discriminator's loss. Note the discriminator's parameters are fixed when we backpropagate the adversarial loss to twin parameter theta. 
Here we show the pipeline of the proposed DeepFire SVDD learning framework. The inputs are normal training data X and the outputs are well trained in binding function F and the discriminator G. The end-to-end -end learning process contains three steps. Firstly, we train the encoder F while minimizing the deep SVDD's loss. Secondly, we fix the encoder parameters and train the discriminator G while minimizing the discriminator's loss. Thirdly, we fix the discriminator's parameters and train encoder F to minimize the adversarial loss. Note we will repeat the step two and three until the model converges. Now we provide several extensions of our proposed framework to some challenging settings. Note we study the fairness problem with binary PSV in this work. However, our framework can be extended to solve fairness problems with multi-state PSV, such as education level or nationality by changing the current binary discriminator G into a multi-class classification network. Our framework can also support multiple PSV variables, given the fairness requirements on multiple PSVs, say race and gender. We can enumerate all the combinations and transform them into a multi-state PSV variable. This is an important property lacking in many fair classification methods, as clearly making a model fairer with respect to, say, gender could make it unfair with respect to, say, race. Lastly, our framework can be modified to accommodate semi-supervised anomaly detection settings by combining the current loss functions with a new supervised classification branch for labeled points in the training set. Now we introduce our experimental section. Our experiments focus on the following questions. First, do existing deep anomaly detection algorithms produce unfair results? Second, how does our proposed algorithms work in two types of datasets involving low-dimensional data and high-dimensional data? Third, how our proposed model generates fair anomaly detection results? First, we introduce our selected datasets. We report how we set the binary PSV variables and how we split the data into normal and abnormal groups in this table. Moreover, we explore a naive way to generate a balanced training set while randomly removing the instance within majority group in original training set. We want to study whether such strategy can make the baseline models fairer. Now we evaluate deep SVDD and the DCAE on both original dataset and the balanced dataset. We visualize the fairness results in three, in these four bar plots. Note the larger fairness by p rule and the smaller distribution distance means the model is fairer. Observed from these figures, we can see that training deep anomaly detection models with a balanced training set can slightly improve the fairness in some cases. However, in most cases, the fairness by p rule doesn't satisfy the 80% rule. Observing the fact that all the baselines are unfair, here we compare deep fair SVDD with those baselines. Based on figure A, we see deep fair SVDD's fairness by P rule results are always greater than 80%. Moreover, the fairness by distribution distance results in B demonstrate that deep fair SVDD achieves much better overall fairness performance, especially for the setup A dataset. Lastly, observing figure C, we notice that in compass, Amnist Invert and Amnist USPS datasets. Our proposed approach performs slightly worse than Deep SVDD. While in the SETIB A dataset, our approach performs slightly better than other two baselines. One special property for our downsampled SETIB A data is that both the normal and the abnormal groups have a balanced number of males and females. We hypothesis the fairness rules may serve as a positive guidance which can help our model improve the anomaly detection performance. Besides the numerical study of the fairness results, we visualize randomly selected normal and abnormal instance according to deep SVDD and deep fair SVDD's predictions in following figures. 
for the MNIST invert data set. We can see that both the MNIST instance and the inverted MNIST instance are distributed evenly determined by DeepFair SVDD. On the contrary, there are more MNIST instance in the abnormal group and the viewer MNIST instance in normal group determined by Deep SVDD. Similar results are observed from setup A data. More males are predicted as an abnormal group and more females are predicted as normal group. These unfair results are mitigated with deep fair SVDD. And we can see a nearly balanced number of males and females in both groups predicted by our approach. Further, we studied a trade-off between fairness and anomaly detection performance while tuning the hyperparameter lambda. Note lambda ranges from 0.01 to 100, and it is visualized in each plot with the order from left to right, respectively. In all four datasets, the fairness by p rule value increases as lambda increases. The AOC scores decrease in most datasets as lambda increases. We have also noticed one exception result in the Sally dataset. Both fairness by p rule and the AOC score increase as the lambda increases. We have analyzed this case before. The fairness constraint is extra information that could help the algorithm improve anomaly detection performance. Generally speaking, training the deep fair SVDD with a larger lambda will lead to fairer results and usually a slight loss in terms of the anomaly detection performance. Recall that our fairness goal is to learn a fair embedding so that we apply Tisney to visualize the feature embeddings for test instance. Red and blue points represent test instance with different PSV values. Comparing to deep SVDD's results, the deep fair SVDD's learned embeddings are more fair as blue and red points are always blended together, which are hard to separate. This analysis is important as deep fair SVDD's objective is to learn a fair representation, which is statistically independent on the PSV variable Z. Our proposed approach is demonstrated to learn a fair representation. Here we conduct experiments to study how deep fair SVDD's predictions differ from deep SVDD's predictions. We calculate the Jacquard index as the overlap ratios for predicted anomaly instance. We can see that the overlap ratios are pretty high among all the datasets. We have also reported the training time for deep fair SVDD and compared it against the deep SVDD. Training deep fair SVDD takes longer time because we have a new fairness objective and it is learned through adversarial learning. We leave how to speed up the training process as an interesting future work. Finally, we summarize our work on fair deep anomaly detection. We view this work as a first step towards studying the fairness of deep anomaly detection problems. In this work, we propose two different measures for group level fairness for deep anomaly detection tasks, which are effective in different settings. Moreover, we connect adversarial learning with deep SVDD and demonstrate its success in end-to-end -end fair anomaly detection tasks. Lastly, we bring up some interesting and challenging extensions on deep fair anomaly detection problems like considering multiple PSVs and the learning with limited supervision. That's all for our presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.